Hello, this is Vampire. Um, this video is not going to be structured. I'm just going to kind of uh, go with the flow. So please bear with me on that. Uh, all I do know is I'm going to try to open my heart out. So please try to receive it with an open mind. And hopefully it's going to uh, open some interesting discussion, uh, make some people think and stuff, and uh, you know try to keep the comments friendly. Basically, this is what happened. The other day, I was at the bank with uh, a family member, and uh, they had to take care of uh, some bank stuff, and I was like, you know, wait, can you hold on a second? Because I'm uh, noticing some uh, strange things. So I saw uh, this suspicious-looking person at the front of the bank, and then I was like, okay, uh, we waited a, a little bit, and then I was like, okay, let me go in there with you, all right, just to make sure you're safe. So I went in. Uh, with my uh, family member and then um, basically one suspicious person turned into two suspicious uh, people alright and uh, I, I went in there and I, I got into some pretty close proximity with, with these uh, two suspicious people that I saw alright they were very cold callous stares that they gave me they they looked very menacing and uh they it, to me it just looked like dead eyes you know they just give you that dead look and they look at you and they think of you as uh non-human uh that you are something that they could take advantage of they're just waiting for it or they want to you know i could just see it um to me what i saw was two very very evil people. Um, now, I don't have any proof. To me, it was just like an intuition, like a police officer. But you can say, hey, vampire, you're not a police officer. So, sure, you know what, I'm not. So I have no evidence, no proof. But um, I just got this gut feeling that, that these two guys were, were like horrible, horrible people. All right. Um, so anyway, I started thinking about the situation. Uh, nothing happened, of course, luckily, all right? But uh, I started thinking about the situation, and it reminded me of something that I read in uh, my student's book, actually, which is called uh, Survive the Coming Storm, all right? And there's a passage in here where uh, he talks about sheep, wolves, and sheepdogs, all right? And... Uh, <laughs> These two guys that I saw at the bank, to me, were 200% wolves, all right, 200% wolves. And I looked around, and the area that I was in, there was a Target and stuff like that. We actually went to the Target afterwards, and, uh, you know, that, that what I see is sheep, okay? I see just totally oblivious sheep, and amongst the sheep, I saw two wolves. To me, it was clear clear cut all right like a diamond it's i'm 100 percent positive that these two were wolves and uh they're in mixed in with the sheep all right i think the problem is the biggest problem is uh the majority of the people are sheep and they cannot tell the difference between wolves sheep dogs and sheep actually so the the majority of the people that are sheep cannot tell the difference between the three the historical story about uh, Ricky Dozan and uh, Kimura okay and uh, basically they had a professional wrestling match and there were a lot of uh, problems in in the behind the scenes okay and uh, Kimura who is famous, if you understand the history of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, okay, he's very famous. And also in Judo, he, he's uh, very important because uh, he is said to be uh, pretty much the best ever in, in, uh, in Judo, in, in Japanese history, all right? So uh, Kimura was basically, uh, he, he came out and said, like, Ricky Dozan is the star in professional wrestling, but if it came down to a real fight... I am the man here, and he basically a martial artist shouldn't say something like that. But after 
all the repeated, like, I guess, uh, spotlight taken away from him and just being dogged on constantly and him taking all the bumps and bruises and, and doing the real work and stuff, I think he just, you know, just came out and said it. it. She shouldn't have, but he did. And that created a lot of resentment towards Ricky Dozan, the father of Japanese pro wrestling. So that guy basically... Uh, decided to teach him a lesson, but he knew that in a real fight, he doesn't stand a chance. You're talking about the best judo player ever versus a professional wrestler who, you know, he, he what he did is sports entertainment. So, uh, you know, he, he what he did was marketing. That, that was his specialty. I'm sure there's professional res wrestlers out there that can really fight, but this guy in particular was a marketing guy. I'm sure he was tough. He's still a big guy. He's a lot bigger than, than Kimura. So what happened was he basically uh, used the element of surprise and knocked out uh, Kimura. He just, he just beat him up really, really bad. Kimura had no idea this was coming. He thought this was a worked match. All right, So he got knocked out because the bottom line is you get a guy who's you know 250 pounds or maybe bigger, a big dude, it's going to hit hard, hard enough to knock you out if you're not expecting it, all right, so in the bank, all right, I, there were two guys there, okay, each one of them outweighed me by far, and yeah, I may be way more skilled, whatever, if they hit me, they can knock me out, all right, and the way they're going to do it also is they're not going to be nice about it, they're not going to let me know that it's coming, in the octagon, all right, put me in a cage match against these guys. I would love to fight them in the cage and put them into a brutal beatdown and cripple them so they can't harm society any longer so that my family and I and your family can walk into a Target or the bank and feel safe. I would love to. I would love to, all right? Uh, I don't believe in fighting in sports, but for this kind of reason, sure, I would, okay? But uh, in the bank... <laughs> in the street, you know, there's no way I would want to fight these guys, there's no, this is a wolf, I'm telling you, this, this is, is menacing, they're in their element, they're brutal, they're vicious, all right, um, even if I had something like this, I may barely make it, that's the reality, as, as with all the training that I've had, ready for the ground, ready for the worst possible scenario, whatever, you know, they, they just, it's like, ready, go, and they're on me, all right, and if I'm lucky to have survived that first shot, if I had awareness enough, and hopefully they didn't stab me, all right, if, I, if I'm able to survive that, and I have the time, I may still be in a very bad position where they're on top, and then if I muster up all my strength as I'm hearing the echo of the damage being done to my body that's vibrating through, and I can hear it, and my mind is starting to fade out, okay, and I don't know what's what's happening because everything's happening so quick. I'm about to pass out, all right? You know, maybe I can muster the strength, come back to reality, pull something like this out, and then just start, you know, trying to change the tides, okay? But two, forget it. Forget it, you know? Um, if it's not going to be like that, it's going to be like basically, like seriously, like two wolves on me, I have the distance and they're going to be barking at me. If they're armed with a firearm, then forget it, they'll just shoot me. All right, I need to be running. How am I supposed to protect my, uh, you know, my family member at that point, you know? Uh, yeah, the, the position that I'm put in is, is very, very difficult. And one of the problems I feel with that, with all this that I'm saying to you guys, this is reality, all right? This is reality, unfortunately. Now, if my family member wasn't, wasn't involved, you know, and legally it's okay for me to be, you know, the way that I want, then I would just assassinate these guys, all right? I would just go behind them and just eliminate them, and then we'll, we'll see who's the tougher guy, you know what I mean? But that's, that's not legal. It's not post-apocalyptic future, you know. And so one of the problems is because um, the sheep is the majority. And the sheep, the majority, is what created these rules that we have here today in society. You know, oh, knives are bad. You know, we got to ban knives. we got to ban firearms. we got to ban, you know. So the, these sheep that don't understand, that can't tell the difference between the wolves, who've never even probably seen a wolf, doesn't even know what a wolf is capable of, created these laws, all right? Calling myself a sheepdog, but the, the honest, honest to God, I think is 
there is a, uh, a gray area here between the sheep, the wolves, and the, and the sheep dogs that's not covered, all right? Uh, in an extreme sense, yes, that's, those are the three divisions, but I'm honestly somewhere between a sheep and a sheep dog. I can't say that I'm a 100% sheep dog because the only sheep dogs out there really are probably if you're military, if you're uh, police in some type of security field, you know, th those are, I was in security field, but not, no longer. So now I cannot say that I'm a sheep dog, all right? And uh, even then, when I was working that kind of job, you're still very, very limited, all right? Very, very limited.